welcome to pure experiences you have the path you have the guide and you have the goals the guide will prescribe some ways to reach that goal some tricks some methods some corrections will be given based on the teachings relevant to that path depending on the goals that you want to achieve these are the spiritual practices how to perform these practices will be today's topic but this talk is not about any particular practice the specific practice will be given to you by your guide there are some universal rules some general rules that apply to all the practices it does not matter what your path is you must keep in mind some things about practices which we are going to discuss now what are the prerequisites to start a practice now obviously if there is no goal in front of you towards which you want to reach using that practice it will be useless to practice anything so what do you want to achieve by doing that practice must be very certain and clear second if you don't know your path the specific way that you have chosen to reach that goal then there is no use of the practice it should be very clear that this is my path and this path involves these practices this set of practices and nothing else is useful the practices must belong to that proper path that you have chosen and if the practices are not done as per the guidance that you received from your guide they do not produce good results so practicing as per your guru's instructions is absolutely necessary and the seeker must be ready to take up these practices the seeker should have the needed qualities should be fit for performing those practices and above all knowledge about these practices is necessary theory as well as practical aspects must be well understood if you don't know what it is do not do it once these requirements are satisfied one can hope to achieve something by doing any spiritual practice before doing the practices you should check some things usually the practice is given because there are some obstacles or resistances and they need to be removed what stands between you and your goal that will be your obstacle find out do you really have that obstacle is there a resistance there somewhere and check whether the practice is designed to treat it to remove it this is probably the most important check a specific kind of obstacle will require a specific kind of practice and if there are many obstacles there will be a set of practices double check if your practice is really suitable for the kind of obstacle that you are facing if there is no obstacle obviously there is no need of any practice you are already at your goal but usually that is not the case for majority of seekers they need to do some practices or sometimes the practices are like a course correction they are prescribed to stay on the path or to stay on the goal not to diverge from that position or to simply enhance your achievements further so these things must be very clear in the mind of the seeker if not you should always ask your guide and that is why it is useless to practice anything without a guide only a guide knows what to do what will be useful what is required what is necessary usually seeker does not know all these things just like a patient does not know what is the disease what what is the cure what are the complications how to do the surgery the patient needs a doctor in the same way a seeker needs a guide or a guru or a teacher depending on the practice some very specific instructions will be given such as the time at which it should be done it can be morning day night evening and the duration for which it should be done while practicing you should check whether the time is right sometimes a specific kind of food will be prescribed it is not that the food has some magical qualities or giving up some kind of food will magically make you capable of reaching your goals in one night but probably the recommendations about food are simply because they clear up some obstacles they help in uh, making the practices go smoothly some of the practices will involve mantras or chanting or spell casting depending on what you're doing 
always check that you are using the correct language the correct mantra you learn to pronounce it correctly spend some time on it always consult your guide if you are pronouncing it correctly or you are if you are using the correct words and know the meanings of these words some of the practices will involve idols or some other equipment and the instructions are very very specific about these things the form of the idol the colors the method of invocation rituals everything is very very precise always double check it does not matter whether you succeed in your practice or not but there will be no doubt in your mind that you did everything absolutely as instructed by the guide some practices will require you to face a particular direction east to west north or south to lie down in a particular alignment and so on probably there is a long checklist depending on the practice you are in some practices are very simple they do not have these kind of specifications some paths will require you to study some books scriptures and all always check that you are reading from the correct source you may end up in ignorance if you don't double check what you are reading from where you are gathering your information and again the advice of your guide is valuable here these are some examples of the checks but your checklist will depend on your practice now i will discuss some do's and don'ts practice regularly and the schedule must be exactly as prescribed by your guide some people take up a practice and they do it for few days and then they leave it because no miracles are happening but uh, there is no practice in this world which will produce a result in few days some people do it for many years and they drop out then they pick it up again do it for few days then they drop out and these kinds of routines produce no results so do your practice very very regularly initially the progress is very slow then it builds up then it picks up speed generally this is the pattern in all the spiritual practices being regular is very important always go step by step in your practice and the steps will be given to you do not try to perform the last step because you want a shortcut or the beginning steps are boring do not skip it because most of the time the result will be zero and your guide will not be happy secondly some of the practices require some kind of protection etc or some kind of preparation and if that is skipped these kind of practices can cause a major harm usually the guide knows what are the steps how to take you step by step so initially the practice will be very simple and then slowly it becomes more and more difficult so do not jump into the later steps even if you are given all the steps in the beginning some practices requires disciplines of sleeping eating celibacy speech and many other things and always do it as per guides instructions do not assume anything do not think that probably i don't need to discipline here myself and i'll be successful or do not impose a discipline which is not necessary in your practice usually the practices take up some time in your day and some people may want to skip the family time or, or uh, social responsibilities to perform those practices but that is not recommended you should always finish your family or social responsibility before engaging in the practice to make time for your practice you should simplify your life you should not destroy your life keep all your practices a secret this is very important some practices are there which will work only if they are kept kept secret but generally that is not true and even if some people come to know what you are practicing they will still work but still it is recommended to keep your spiritual pursuit your practices a secret because this is your personal matter sometimes when your family or other people friends when they come to know about your practices they get terrified because you are doing something which is new for them which is unusual for them especially in countries 
where spiritual practices are seen as strange in spiritual countries older civilizations this is not a big problem but if you are living in a city or a materialistic country then people can become an obstacle if they come to know it is one thing to brand somebody as crazy different or hippie but uh, it can escalate and they may try to stop you from practicing always meet up with your guide regularly ask for uh, revisions ask for reviews take feedback as much as possible and keep correcting your mistakes what happens is people continue to do the practice without even telling their guides and if there is a mistake in the practice it causes problems or it produces no results and the guide comes to know only after many years so do not do it if you can show it show the guide how you are doing it describe it if you cannot show it take the feedback if you decide to add remove something from the practices always inform your guide give it your 100% uh, a half hearted practice is never successful remember this is your life goal what else would you like to prefer more than this what is the bigger priority in your life than your practice now a short list of things that you should not do just like i said don't do it if you do not know about it what happens is people read some books or watch some videos or hear something from their friends or relatives and they start practicing it mostly it is harmless mostly it is just mumbo jumbo that is cooked up by somebody for earning a little bit of money it can be a book it can be a video and they end up wasting their time or if they by chance do something which is serious they end up harming themselves why do people do that thing because they don't have a guide they are reluctant to find somebody to guide themselves they have this arrogance or you can say immaturity to think that i know everything i can do any practice i want mostly it fails mostly it's a waste of time mostly they give up in a week and they keep switching from practice to practice let me try this this seems to be miraculous that seems to be strange and that person got something by doing something let me try it so you can see that obviously these people have no goals they don't know what they are doing they know why they are doing it is just a random brownian motion of practices so remember if you don't know what you're doing don't touch it start from the beginning start from the spiritual goal some people learn the lesson only after they are harmed badly by some powerful practice not only you should not do it without knowing without being informed about it if you see somebody your friend or relative or children doing it willy nilly you should either stop them or you should warn them if you have a guide obviously the guide will instruct you to stop all that nonsense immediately a practice does not become good simply because you heard it from somebody or you read it somewhere on the internet that is foolishness do not mix different kinds of practices you should keep the practice very very pure the rule is one practice one path one guide one goal and you can guess why people mix practices because they do not know what they want there is no goal so sometimes this and after a while they get bored sometimes other after a while that is not producing results third practice and they do all the three at once to make it powerful or any other kind of stupidity that they imagine and this will not produce any result and surely it will be harmful as i said practices take a long time to show effects so the harm may appear after many years in the spiritual matters are long term matters nothing happens in a day especially in the context of practices why do people mix practices because nobody is overseeing them nobody is there to tell them this practice is wrong or you have mixed something from the other path into my practice they don't have a guru they don't have anybody to guide them if you had a guru the guru would have ensured purity of the practice it is not that it is forbidden to mix practices but it should be well informed decision and sometimes the guru will ask you to mix something in there if he or she thinks it will help you just like a doctor can mix 
some medicines if the doctor thinks it will help you but you cannot mix medicines yourself and treat yourself using random medicines that will be suicidal the only thing is medicines show their effects in hours and spiritual practices takes years remember if something goes wrong probably even the guide does not know how to fix it because these are not physical or mental issues these are spiritual matters the knowledge about these things is surely not much many of the practices are not well understood that is why a very experienced guide is needed if your practice is very heavy the more experienced the guide will be for doing a 5 minute meditation probably you don't need that talented guide if your practice is causing you pain discomfort immediately stop it and consult your guide because usually the practices are not supposed to do it usually the practices are supposed to bring peace quietness happiness joy good feelings positivity if they are causing pain and discomfort something is wrong but there are some practices like yoga asanas where the body can pain a little bit initially just like when you go to gym and lift weights initially that will be a painful experience for few days but as you build the muscles it will be a joyful experience same way initially the body can take some time to adapt to the practice but if the duration of the pain is unreasonable always discontinue consult your guide usually a sign of faulty practice is that it causes discomfort and in case of practices that involve body sitting for long time or standing for long time the reason is obvious but if the practice is not heavy on the body does not involve muscles and bones for example a breathing practice or a meditation practice and if it is causing pain and discomfort then immediately you should discontinue it it is very clear that the practice is faulty or it is not suitable for you some practices are of purely mental kind or even beyond mind and they cause indirect symptoms such as fear anger anxiety some kind of madness i am not going to name the paths or practices here just to keep everything politically correct because people don't like anybody to say anything bad about their favorite practice but you can guess and this series is obviously for newcomers probably they won't feel bad about these things because they are not invested in their practice but there are practices that can, can cause such symptoms and if it happens you should immediately stop it ask your guide probably the impurities are too many probably the obstacles or resistances are huge do not imagine anything about your practice probably i am doing this and that is causing that for example or probably i should do it twice a day because i am feeling so good doing this practice and this is stupidity it is always better to ask your guide instead of imagining something strange about the practice always clarify it with your guide do not assume things using your own imagination the general rule is that if you are not well if there is a disease or if there is a mental issue or you are going through some bad time in your life the general rule is to not do any kind of practice remember the practice is spiritual in nature it is not meant to fix your life it is not meant to fix your body your mind or people around you if you are doing this kind of practice then probably it is not spiritual practice or if you have this kind of assumptions that the practice will keep me healthy or the practice will keep my mind and the situations in the life heavenly then probably it is already too late you are already deluded and you don't have any guide or any path and you don't even know the meaning of spiritual practice so whenever there is a situation where the body and the mind is not well you should pause your practice let your health recover let your peace of mind come back and then continue your practice remember spiritual practices are not meant for treating the diseases of the body or treating the diseases of the mind unfortunately somehow this kind of superstition is widespread in the society even among seekers that if i do this practice my body will become better or my mind will become better no spirituality is something which transcends body and mind otherwise we won't call it spirituality 
probably there are some practices that will have a good effect on the body and mind especially if uh, some practices that require discipline of the food or exercises or living a solitary life away from the poison of the society they can cause good side effects positive side effects but they are only side effects they are not uh, the goal certainly not a spiritual goal if you are in confusion that i have a little bit of disease here or uh, my my mind is not uh, peaceful today should i do it or not then always ask your guide whom else are you going to ask some people get carried away with the practices they do it 24 by 7 there are some practices which must be done 24 by 7 like mindfulness awareness etc but they are very light they are not even practice they are simply being in that mode but usually the stronger practices must be done only for few minutes not more than one hour sometimes what happens is that a student starts getting positive results from the practices they start reaping the benefits of the practice and they think that probably more is better remember this is not money this is not your investment where investing more will give you more profit so bringing the worldly logic here will not work doing more of the practices is not going to be necessarily beneficial for you do not stretch your practice beyond the recommended duration usually generally the sign of progress is reduction in practice not increase of practices i'll give you an example if you have a disease and the doctor prescribes you a medicine initially it will be given one dose per day next week if you go back to the doctor the doctor will say now you need to take this medicine once every 3 days because i can see an improvement in your health after one month you go there and the doctor says you reduce the dose to one pill per week only and finally the doctor will say don't need the medicine so it is being reduced gradually as you are progressing same thing is true with most of the practice if a practice is there to remove an obstacle or resistance and the obstacle is dissolving your practice should reduce instead of increasing do not start practicing more because you are feeling great now because your obstacle is gone no probably you will need to change the practice not increase it and again guide is valuable here you won't know all these things only the guide or the guru will know when to stop the practice when to start it when to increase it or to decrease it if you are spending whole of your life practicing for hours and hours per day when are you going to reach your spiritual goal practice is not the goal hopefully every seeker will, will understand this much some seekers are in a very big hurry they want the results tomorrow if the practice is prescribed for 3 years do it for 3 years there is a difference between spiritual practice and digging a hole in the ground if you dig it faster yes the hole will be deeper quickly but the spiritual practice is not a job which scales with effort it cannot be done faster so do not uh, impose targets or time frames on your practice it should be very very natural start doing it exactly as instructed wait for the results there are some practices that continue for many years there are some practices that continue for many lifetimes as i said spirituality is uh, somewhat different from your worldly affairs here your everyday logic will break think from a spiritual angle always sometimes some practices produce worldly results as i said better health better mind better relationships and the outsiders see it that this practitioner is reaping the benefits of a spiritual practice i also want great health i also want peace of mind i also also want the same happiness this fellow has and they start doing it but uh, spiritual practice is not this kind of monkey business you cannot copy anybody and you should not do it for worldly reasons so what happens is if a practice is suitable for somebody it can produce some worldly benefits but it may not be suitable for the person who is copying it blindly it can also harm that person again we go back to the medicine metaphor it is a very interesting and useful metaphor if you see a person becoming fit and healthy 
because he is taking some kind of medicine do not simply buy that medicine start taking it every day twice that is not intelligence you will end up in hospital in a bad condition so if a practice is benefiting somebody producing worldly results it does not mean that it is useful for you and it will produce a worldly result or material benefits for you nothing will happen anyhow if somebody is doing a spiritual practice for materialistic benefits that person is not a seeker really that person is simply some greedy deluded fellow who is trying to get something thinking that spiritual practice is a shortcut to get it so again who does the spiritual practice for worldly reasons those who do not have any goal any spiritual goal those who do not have any guru some people turn spiritual practices into a hobby some people simply want to boast show off that i am spiritual i meditate i chant this mantra i do this and this celebrity guru is my guru so they bring cheapness into spirituality they make spirituality very cheap and they go to their gurus and ask for little things please give me a yoga for long hair and these people are not really seekers they will surely find a fake guru because a real guru is not going to do this thing a real guru will not even allow this kind of people to approach him some people want a spiritual shortcut give me something that can work in one week because i am free this week i don't want to practice for 3 years so they are looking for shortcuts they do have a, a spiritual goal probably but they don't have the maturity or um, wisdom to understand what it is what it takes to achieve that goal or they are simply very very new young people i am not saying that you should not be light hearted about spirituality or you should not ask for faster ways yes you can but there is a difference sometimes your practice will be great for you but it may happen that it is harming somebody else for example you are meditating 8 hours per day suppose that is your practice but then you don't do any job you don't do anything you are absent from your house and your family is suffering obviously if you want this kind of practice you should not have a family but if you have it then it is harming others now the karmic law is very clear that today you will benefit but tomorrow you will need to pay for it so if you see that you are doing something which is causing some kind of harm to other people other creatures or the environment you should immediately stop it if it is producing results don't do it more just like i said overdoing your practice is not going to magnify its effect it will probably cause some strange side effect or will cause some kind of harm some people for some or the other reason pretend to practice probably they don't like the practice but to please their guru or they have some other agenda they pretend that i'm practicing this and this and it, it can be simply to show off or to impress women or there can be number of reasons and these kind of practices obviously are not practices and they don't produce any results so if a guru has given you a practice do not pretend that you are practicing if you don't like it simply ask for something else there are hundreds of practices usually the practice should make you independent usually most of the practices are to be done alone some of the practices are done in groups but if you find that i cannot do this practice unless there is a partner or there is a crowd of people doing it with me then probably it is not a suitable practice for you probably it has already gone faulty so do not depend on anybody else for your practice and you should not depend on your guide also for your practice you should be able to perform it independently the guide is just to consult support you if you are unable to practice without being with the guide or without keeping a photo of the guide in front of you all the time then something is wrong some people fool themselves that oh this great practice ancient practice is working amazingly they are not able to evaluate the results they keep fooling themselves that yes i am progressing probably that is because they don't have a proper guide or they don't talk to their guides they are not taking the feedback also because a guide will stop you from fooling yourself the guide will terminate your practice or or give some other practice to you if it is not working so if you fool yourself thinking that my practice is good you will waste a lot of time you will never reach your goals 
Sometimes people get bad effects from the practices and they keep fooling themselves that no, this is not a product of my practice. This is not an effect of my practice. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm good to go. And they keep doing that practice. And again, this is happening because nobody is looking at them. Nobody is monitoring them. So always keep somebody as a check. Your fellow seekers, friends, relatives and ideally your guide. Some people learn something, they get a benefit, they start teaching it to everyone and the result is a disaster or simply waste of time for everyone because as I said, it is like a medicine. It should not be done and obviously you should not teach it to anybody else. Only a guide can teach, only a teacher can teach it to anybody and the teacher decides whom to teach using his or her own strict criteria after testing, after trials. The suitability of the student is checked before giving them practices. If you are teaching it to everybody because you know how to do it, that will end up causing harms of all kinds or it will simply waste everybody's time. They will get no results. And yes, it is going to anger your guide a lot. Always take permission of your guide before teaching anything to anybody. This teaching business is a little bit involved, so I am not going to cover it today. We will discuss about this topic of becoming a teacher later in the series. Do not expect miracles, overnight results from your practices. Never happens. Over expectation leads to disappointment. Once you start getting the results of the practices, do not exhibit them to everybody. First, people don't understand it. Second, they get terrified. Third, they will try to exploit you, your abilities for their own selfish benefits. And probably there are more bad effects if you start exhibiting your accomplishments to everybody. It is especially true when you start getting spiritual powers or extraordinary abilities which ordinary people don't have. And this is a very strange world, very wicked world. People will become jealous. People will become enemies. People will try to compete with you. And some of them may even try to derail your practice by poisoning your mind. Your guru is not good. You are doing it wrong. I know a bigger guru. I am a better guru. You will progress there more. Believe me or not, there are such people. Spiritual field is also wicked. It is not free from impure minds, to say it politely. Some practices demand a specific kind of place where it should be done. There are some very difficult practices that must be done in the presence of the guide or the guru. For such practices, it is best to stay with the guide. And obviously, the guide will provide that kind of arrangement. If he is a good, genuine teacher, he will ensure that uh, his students are not practicing everywhere, wherever they wish. They will be trained in a controlled environment. So if the guide says you need to practice it here, do not practice at home or somewhere else, you should pay attention. Some practices involve a specific place which is purified. And I know people don't believe these things nowadays. They start practicing anywhere they want, even on streets public parks, sea coast, or they go and sit on some random mountain somewhere. But uh, obviously it, is, it has no effect except it can make you happy for a while that you are doing something for spirituality. So always practice at the recommended place. There is something special about that place. That is why it is recommended. If it must be done only in an ashram, do not do it at home. There can be reasons. There can be reasons that uh, the guide wants you to do in front of him. Or uh, it can be that this practice will have some kind of effects on the family members. Avoid crowded places. Avoid children. Avoid pets. And avoid practicing near old relatives for some obvious reasons. Most of the practices must be done really privately in a secluded, peaceful place. Avoid public places. An ashram can be called a public place, but it is not really a public place. You can learn some practices at some public place, but then you should switch to something which is private. The place where you practice is your temple now. 
it should be kept very neat clean it should be peaceful no noises no pollution and it should be bright well ventilated even the places where you study read books should be like this and obviously the places where satsangs are held meetings are held or you discuss it with your fellow practitioners they must be like this remember the practice becomes your lifestyle the way you live the way you behave and way you dress and the places you stay in they all reflect the spiritual lifestyle so start the best practices from the beginning itself how to judge your progress if you're practicing usually your guide is the best person to judge your progress but uh, you will be able to do it after some experience if years and years pass and you do not see even a little bit of progress you should discontinue that practice sometimes even if the guide is okay with your practice you should try something else and this should not be done so frequently give it some years if you do not see any changes you do not see any signs and symptoms neither positive nor negative probably you are on a wrong path probably the guide is also not suitable here he is not able to check you so you should discontinue there is no point of blindly doing it spirituality is not blind faith on practices or on the guru and certainly discontinue if it causes any kind of harm and that should be judged after some time if you immediately face some problems you can ask your guide but uh, if it does not become better with time you must discontinue the practice usually you will be able to do a self evaluation periodic self evaluation to find out how you are progressing usually your guide will give you some method of self evaluation and you can judge your progress you can measure your progress by this self evaluation methods but eventually the guide will do the evaluation and he will decide whether you are progressing or not always remember that uh, this will not happen in few days or even few months the guide knows when to do the evaluation generally the signs of progress are increase in your well being happiness peace increase in your knowledge intelligence understanding and a general stability in your life the chaos of the life should decrease the stupidity should reduce and the mental disorders and distortions should disappear with time which means increase in happiness and peace there is no other happiness sometimes you will be able to see that you are reaching your goals whatever those goals are they will become visible to you and if you are practicing nicely according to the rules and regulations according to the tradition instructions of your guide if all these conditions are met there is some chance that you will achieve your goal